I have a lot of questions for you, sir. By the way, I even said it to start off today's show when I announced to the nation that you were coming on. Like, Adam Pierce should be embarrassed. You know, the way that you present your show and the way you present yourself and how you control the roster of SmackDown, much different than what we see on Monday nights and on Monday Night Raw. Chaos, if you will, on Monday Night Raw. That well, is not the same thing on Friday. So I, I think a tip of the cap to you, good sir, on what the good work you've been able to do just in the very short time that you've been the general manager of SmackDown. Well, I, I appreciate that. And look, I, I, uh, I wanted to make a point uh, on my, my first full night on the job last week that, um, you know, those kind of shenanigans, that kind of skullduggery, tomfoolery, chicanery, and jiggery pokery isn't going to fly on Friday nights. And uh, I, I felt like maybe I overstepped a little bit, but um, you know, I'm I'm some some people have called me old school. Uh, maybe I'm still of the opinion that it's better to be reeled in than to be pushed forward. So I I, I took some decisive action in the moment and uh, had a, had a chance to reflect on it, uh, and that's why I made my presence known on Monday night also. You know, Bully, when I got divorced the first time, uh, my ex-wife said reason number one was skullduggery. So, skullduggery. Uh, what was I, I never not, heard not of the, what, was the la- what was the last not one? Enough, that sounded... enough, um, maybe not enough jiggery-pokery. Ah, jiggery-pokery. <laughs> ah, 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 jiggery-pokery. Uh, that sounds like something out of Willy Wonka. Jiggery-pokery. Wait, 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 if, you wait, thought, wait. if you thought that my new position was going to change me, Dave, you got another thing coming. <laughs> uh, you know, Nick, we just put, because uh, we just opened up our YouTube page. By the way, uh, our interview with Lyra, Lyra uh, Valkyria is up on our YouTube page. But we also posted the roast that, and, and, and Nick... Man, I watched it again. You destroyed me. You humiliated me, embarrassed me, and I mean that in all the best ways. High compliments to you, good sir, on how well you did in your sense of humor. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Which you have that. thrown in your first couple of weeks as general manager. You still have that quick wit about you for sure. Uh, I appreciate that, but I, w- I would I would add a caveat that you know I had a, a very easy target on the uh, on the roast, but uh, now moving forward, hey, uh, who knows what what verbal barbs might. Uh, might emit from this mouth of mine. But. What the? <laughs> so Nick, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you uh, the the question that immediately popped into my mind when uh, I heard that you were coming on this morning. You've had a long career, and you have definitely grinded for a long time with uh, a, a lot lots of highs and a couple of lows. But this has to be, I mean, other than, you know, marrying Mickey and and the birth of your son, this has to be one of the highest for you. So how does it truly feel to make it into the WWE? Yeah, look, it's, um, I'd be lying if I said it was something that I was, you know, anticipating at this point. But at the same time, I'd sort of made peace with, with the idea that it, you know, it may or may not happen. Um, And I, I think that, I, I sort of made peace with that several years ago. And I think that actually that was in many ways, a sort of turning point um, that helped me sort of embrace uh, the other opportunities that sort of came my way. Um, you know, when, when I sort of, I think I, I think I might've wasted some time with always having sort of one eye on WWE uh, and, and, bef- and then eventually a sort of, I had a sort of epiphany where it was like, look, uh, they're either gonna give you an opportunity or they're not. Uh, all you can do is, you know, be the best, the best version of you that you can, um, and, and sort of, and show the world, you know, your vision of who you want to be. Um, and I, I, I heard you guys um, talking about uh, my my intro and you know my, th- this this new role, and I appreciated uh, the sentiment. And and you know, you talked about opportunity, bully, and and you know that's that's sort of for me is the that's really the baseline of my uh, approach going forward is look you can't you can't determine what opportunities come your way you can only determine what you do with those opportunities and for anyone who is unfamiliar with with my past and my experience like i i've been in this business my entire adult life (laughs) 
you know, this is my profession. Uh, I took a, a god awful Roman gladiator gimmick uh, in 2009, and by 2013, I was the world champion. Uh, I I took a I took a brand that, if it wasn't dead, was on life support, and a belt that was you know not particularly well thought of, and within less than a year, headlined the the biggest independent show in the history of pro wrestling. So for anyone who thinks that I would be <laughs> disappointed or, uh, you know, um, unhappy or anything like that with, with the opportunity to be on, on the biggest sports entertainment show in the world in this capacity, you're out of your mind. I'm so happy. I, and I, I can't wait to get stuck in. And, um, and like, I, like I said, you know, when you think about what I did with those opportunities, this is the biggest opportunity that I've ever had. And uh, I'm fully ready to execute. And this opportunity came knocking in a different form this time. So can you kind of take, I'm really intrigued to listen. You're a pro wrestler to me. You are, you are the quintessential pro wrestler, six, four, 260, whatever you are, you look the part, you speak the part, you dress the part, you represented the part, no matter what, if that was TNA or the NWA, it's all there. And then you get a knock at your door or a ring at your phone going, Hey, how would you like to be a producer? How, what was going through your mind at, the, at that point, knowing that, wait a minute, I'm a pro wrestler, but I'm getting a call as a producer. How did you, how did you come to the decision of saying yes, or what was going through your mind? I'd already made the decision that whatever opportunity, if any, ever came from the WWE, I would take it. Right. I mean, you've only got one chance, uh, you know, in the game and, and that's to play. Right. Like, you know, no matter how that comes along, I I, I had a, a, a brief conversation with Paul Heyman the other night. And, you know, I said, hey, you know, opportunity comes in in all shapes and sizes. And he said, yes, it does. Uh, and, you know, he he knows that better than anyone. Um, I think I I was I was excited. I really was. And I know that people will hear that and be like, ah, oh, bullshit, you know, whatever. But it's um, I've enjoyed tremendously uh the other hats that I've worn in this business uh particularly in the last few years you know um you know bully you're you're quite privy to it it's sort of uh I don't think it's any secret at this point that uh, my fingerprints you know were all over um you know my previous employer <laughs> you know as far as um you know the product and everything like that beyond just my contributions as a talent so I, I do find it very rewarding and it is uh it is something that is only you know certain guys are well suited to it and certain guys are not i mean you can take guys who are unbelievable talent who you know who draw huge money and sell tons of merchandise and and can you know make people feel things they've never felt before but but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're always uh equipped to work behind the scenes and to produce and to work with talent and to understand the sort of connection between the production and the talent and corporate and on all those, you know, I mean, there's so many uh, pieces of, of the WWE machine that I'm still getting familiar with. And it's going to take me months, if not more to, to still really fully understand that beast. And it is a beast. It is a, a, I mean, every day that I go to work, I'm just in awe of the operation. Right. But for me, that's, the most exciting thing it's, it's exhilarating for me because i sit there and go man i remember when i had such limited resources <laughs> you know <Sure. laughs> you know build, building you know building a brand with with one guy and a youtube show right is a, a hell of a lot different than having an idea and being able to pitch it to the most powerful people in the industry uh and then you know and then getting to have your input on on, on things in conjunction with the greatest minds, you know, currently working in the industry, like Michael Hayes and, and, and Hunter and Bruce and Ed Kosky and all the different guys who are involved. I mean, it's, and Kevin Dunn, I mean, just, you know, like getting to, getting to sit on the headsets with Michael and Kevin, like listening to, you know, those conversations and watching that whole process. It's, 
it's fascinating it's terrifying it's exhilarating all at the same time so uh i, I am every bit as um fulfilled and, and you know excited about uh contributing to wwe and this was this was the god's honest truth i um my first uh conversations with with paul with triple h and with bruce um i echoed the same message over and over again uh you know it took it took a few months before you know i, I was sort of given some sort of opportunity and uh but i just kept echoing the same message which was uh, i'm ready willing and able to contribute to wwe in any way i can and i i, I stand by that um i appreciate everybody who who uh who wants to see me, <laughs> you know, um, in, in different capacities. Uh, it's as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm just, I'm just over the moon uh, to be, to be part of the process in any way. And, and um, if other stuff comes along, those opportunities, you can, you can, you can bet that I'll be ready, willing and able. You know, Nick, you're a young man. So I always respected what you did for, the NWA because you knew the rich history and the rich history that was in pro wrestling with that organization. But when it comes to the WWE, this is a company that you grew up on. This is a company you were a fan of. This is the company that the reason why you wanted to do this profession uh, for your career and for your life. So go back to that moment when you debuted there, what was going on in your head? What was, what were you feeling uh, before you stepped into the ring with Adam Pierce and triple H? <laughs> well uh at the risk of of coming off like a, a complete brown noser um i will i will add this little this little note before i i tell this story which is that you can you can go find other interviews that i've given prior to me being employed by the wwe where i've said the same thing so you know i'm not making it up uh backlash 2000 was the night the pay-per-view the moment in time where I, I believe as a 13 year old, that was the day where it sort of, it hit me that I'm not just a fan of this. Like I, uh, this is, I want to be part of this. Like I, I, this is, this is, this is what I want to be. This is who I want to be. Main event of that was triple H and the rock. Uh, the, uh, the Dudley boys put Trish Stratus through a table on that, on that pay-per-view. <laughs> it was an unbelievable pay-per-view top to bottom. I mean, it was like, to me, like, 2000 to 2002 was kind of just untouchable uh you know for, for wwf but obviously i know that that's also uh colored by you know where i was as a young man right it's it, everyone kind of has their favorite era but uh it was just to me the perfect sort of combination of athleticism drama storytelling you know sports it had it just had every sort of you know the title felt like it was the most important thing in the world and uh Triple H was such a huge part of that for me because I think that people can say a lot of different things about me, but I think that I don't think many can, uh, can argue that I have pretty good self-awareness. Um, and even at that young age, I started sort of thinking strategically <laughs> about, you know, how I would fit in, in this industry. And I sort of came to the conclusion after a, a, a you know, a couple of years of observing that I was most likely to be a heel, you know, just for number one, being British, uh, you know, with a predominantly American audience and product. Um, but also because there was something about particularly watching Hunter was like, I just, I could sort of relate to, to his approach, his psychology, his mannerisms, the, the you know, his pacing, um, and I've certainly sort of tried to replicate that along with over the years, obviously I've sort of borrowed a lot from Harley race and Nick Bockwinkle and flair and, you know, Hogan and rock Austin. I mean, all, you know, you, you borrow from everybody. Right. But, but, uh, and Brett obviously was a huge influence on me, but Hunter was the first guy that I really sort of started realizing that I was studying rather than just watching and enjoying. He was the first guy who, cause Brett was my hero, right? Like no questions about it, but I was a fan. I was just like, I love Bret Hart. It was only later on that I sort of went back and studied Bret. But because of where I was in my life, it sort of Hunter was the first guy that I really studied. Um, so anyway, I say all that to say that uh, <laughs> even though the circumstances were not anything that I would have been able to predict ever um, for my first official time in a WWE ring on live television, 
the fact that it was in Triple H's in ring promo segment is, uh, you know, indescribable. Um, all, all, <laughs> uh, obviously, I was loaded in during commercial break. And uh, the thing I remember the most was sitting at ringside trying to look cool, <laughs> trying to keep, you know, trying to keep composed. Like, then here comes, you know, Hunter's music. And like the, the thing I remember the most, my heart was just beating like, a thousand miles an hour like i could hear my heart beating you know it was like funk 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 you know <laughs> it's just all i just thought was, okay well this is it right like just you know do the best you can with what you got that's that's the rule get you know get your opportunity and and you know try to hit the ball and i, I feel like i did pretty good you definitely did that nick and and i kind of feel for that because knowing you and you've always given your time to the show to see you in that position and knowing how much you wanted to be in that position. Um, I just think it's such a win and I'm so glad that you're able to have that moment because very few people who enter this business are able to have the moment like you had. So I'm glad that you were able to have that just a couple of weeks ago on SmackDown. Well, I appreciate that. And hopefully there's a lot more to come. And Nick, just an observation from me, knowing you for a long time. The last time that you were on the show, I had said to Dave, and I think I even said it on air, I heard a, a different level of maturity from you in the wrestling business, which we all have to go through. Everybody has to mature in some way, shape, or form in this business. And it normally doesn't happen until a little bit later on because it takes so long to really learn our art form, our industry, our business. Now what I hear is an exhale. There's a different vibe to you right now. It's almost like a finally, I'm finally getting the opportunity that I've been working for for so long. And if you can ride this kind of peace that I hear in you right now, you're gonna you're gonna uh, achieve levels in the WWE that I don't need. I don't know if you see for you. I do see for you because I've seen it in you since day one. Now I think, but it's that it's just that that calm. Do do you realize that about yourself, by the way? And Mickey, do you see that in Nick? A certain calm to him right now. Um. <clears throat> I think I'm just so great. Like, I'm honestly, I'm just so grateful. I think that there was a long time, you know, even when I was back at WWE the last, like, like when is Nick going to come and when is he going to get an opportunity? The, the amount of times that I would see that in my social media feed and you don't have an answer, you know, we didn't have an answer of like, why isn't he getting an opportunity? What is it about? Like, and even in our own conversations, like I was, I can say even I was like frustrated going like, what? I don't, I don't get it because sometimes you look, you take a a, a look at the landscape and you go, I'm, and I'm not being biased. You know, he's my husband, but Nick is a star. He walks the walk. Like you said, he's six, four. He's what are you? Two sixty two seventy? Like he, brother, out hard. he's jacked. He's stacked. He's handsome. He checks every box, right? Like he's articulate. He can get heat as a heel, which God forbid he heels get heat anymore, like real heat. You know, it's like he checks all the boxes. So I'm going like, I don't I can't wrap my head around it. Have we just stopped hiring workers or like what's and I know how hard he's worked for it. I know how like look when he said ever since a 13 year old boy and you know it, Bubba, and I know it because. Anyone who says who breaks into this business and says that this was not the end goal, they're full of shit. They're lying. They're lying either to you or they're lying to themselves. So they don't have to face the fact that they didn't have. They didn't but have it takes the guts to, make to it. go after. They didn't have the guts to go after the dream. So they made excuses instead. And so I, I if you say that that's not. I don't know where else you dreamed of being when you said, I want to be a superstar in the wrestling business other than WWE. And so you can't bullshit a bullshitter. So if anybody who says that it, they're lying, right? So I knew I was very fortunate and blessed to have all those opportunities and I couldn't wrap my head around why he wasn't getting the opportunity, but I knew the moment that he got the opportunity, he was going to kill it. 
and he was going to knock it out of the park. And I think even when when he got brought in as a producer, I saw a lot of the, well, why is he being a producer? Don't they understand? It's like, no, actually, because WWE, as you know, is in their own bubble. Like, they don't necessarily see everything. They have someone that sees everything, but they don't necessarily see everything or whatever. So perhaps they weren't familiar. I just knew that if he would get the opportunity, he was going to shine. And I'm grateful that they brought him in as a producer, but I'm more grateful that they gave it an, gave him an opportunity to do something on television because it was a game changer. I think it was a game changer for him to have that validity of like, okay, now, I'm a legitimately a WWE superstar and finally 20 years later I can fill in this box of like the dream that I that started at 13 years old you know like I can check this box but also it adds a different element to the show I think there's different possibilities you got you know Survivor Series around the corner and stuff of him and Adam against each other or like just yep. healthy competition all these different elements and then I go well, if you ever have to put on like, oh, he should be wrestling. He should be wrestling. I'm like, but if he ever wrestles, if he ever does have to wrestle, you know, he's going to blow it away. And like in that role of, you know, the GM wrestling, which is entertaining. And, and we were entertained for years with the idea of Vince McMahon taking a stunner or any of these other things. You know, it's just like the longevity in it and how far it can go and the different different depths and we're just stretching the surface now and this is me wishful thinking i'm just thankful that he finally has an opportunity to do it all you know i i, th I think everybody is and and nick for you because you mentioned it before you're world champions with other companies if it didn't go this route and you weren't able to be a part of the wwe would it have been for you like a disappointment or, or, or in your eyes, a failure that you were never able to get to that platform or that stage. Of course. I mean, but like I said, I think sort of going back to Bully's question about, um, I guess, a, a different sort of level of peace that I'm working with. Um, I think for me, it was understanding and being at peace with, like I said before, I can't control whether the opportunity comes you know, I can only control it, that I'm ready to to tackle it head on, you know, in whatever form it comes in. So, you know, my uh, my sort of approach is open mind and open heart, you know, just, um, you know, live with gratitude and be ready to sort of tackle the opportunity and, and feel very fortunate <laughs> that there are thousands and thousands of, of our peers in our industry who uh would kill for an opportunity like this one. Um, and I believe that I've earned it. So it's now it's just a case of uh, proving to the world in particular, the WWE universe that um, there's a reason I'm here. Uh, Nick, I'm just going to throw this out here because, and you kind of made a joke about it in my roast. I'm a huge Cody Rhodes fan. If Cody finishes this story and beats Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40 and becomes the new WWE Undisputed Universal Champion, he should give you an opportunity at that championship title. You gave him an opportunity, as like you said, the biggest independent show of all time. I think he should give you that opportunity. I'm just throwing it out there into the universe, Nick. Right. Well, thank you so much for luring me into a <laughs> clickbait trap. <laughs> Uh, which will which will turn into Nick Aldis says he should get WWE title match. You know, you know, which I be. said that. I After said he oh, says, heads you're, up. you're welcome, Cody, for being put back on the map. Heads up, heads up, heads up, sports Kita. Yeah. Wrestling news. <laughs> right. Also, Nick, by the oh, way, we know he's uh, not beating him, David. We know he's not going to beat. Right well, listen, look, I will, I will man. say, I will say re really quickly, uh, you know, um, the, the fact that the Cody and I's, rivalry chemistry you know story is is sort of undeniable uh and he knows where i am and i know where he is and and uh and never say never yeah uh, and and nick i want to thank you so much for the time thank you for giving us this time i know you're really busy um smackdown is on fs1 this friday night sorry FS1, that's right. big it's contract signing between la knight and roman reigns for crown jewel that's uh that's some combustible elements folks yep
So make Thank sure goodness there's a general manager who knows how to rule with authority. I, I completely agree. I think I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, uh, SmackDown's coming to New York December 1st. Any chance you can hook me up with some tickets? Oh, I'm so, someone's just I'm being pulled away. I'm so sorry. Son of uh, uh, Nick, uh, congratulations. Uh, <laughs> congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. And again, SmackDown FS1 this Friday night. We'll react when myself, Bully, and Mickey are back right here on Busted Open.